All right. We are here with head track and field coach Sarah Ingram, uh, kind of previewing, got a handful of athletes going to the Chico multi-event meet this weekend, Thursday and Friday in Chico, um, and also coming off the season opening race uh, meet, sorry, uh, here at home with Green and Gold this past weekend. Uh, coach, first off, just off the top of your head, just kind of what were the great takeaways from this meet and just how nice was it to kind of open up the season finally with the team there and all of your uh, the alumni there? Um, it was a great weekend. We were really blessed with some good weather. Um, we had a great alumni turnout as well, which is really good to see. Um, I was a little bit nervous that we were still going to be kind of low momentum when it comes to alumni after COVID kind of shut everything down for a couple of years. So um, anyways, it was a great turnout. Um, everybody seemed to really have a good time this weekend, which um, made it a really enjoyable meet for everybody. There was a lot of really good performances, um, no major injuries, which is always um, an, an additional added bonus, you know, for our first meet of the year. Um, but overall, I think everything went really smoothly and um, everybody is just feeling really amped up and really excited to get to like our, our real you know, track meets coming up. So I think the team's in a really good place right now. Yeah, awesome. I know definitely the energy this weekend was was certainly exciting and I think it translated into some pretty solid performances. Um, I mean, the one that off the top of my head really speaks out was Joy Hano in the 60 hurdles. She looked really, really strong. Um, but any other performances you saw that, you know, it, off the top of your head that just stuck out, just somebody that looked particularly fast or uh, yeah. looked racy so far this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see if I just kind of go event group by event group. Um, Terrence Allen had a great showing this weekend. Um, he had a, a little over a two meter PR in the hammer. Um, and I think the coaches were just commenting about how his approach was just really mature and confident and calm. Um, it was just really good to see him kind of come through and all the things he's been working on in practice um, and kind of come out in the competition. Um, but he did really well. Um, Niz, one of our freshman ladies that's just trying to work her butt off and earn a spot on the travel squad. Uh, she did that on Saturday and, and had a, a PR and earned herself a spot on the bus to Turlock. So, um, you know, it's not a, a national qualifying mark, but it's a, an individual performance and a really big improvement that we're just really proud of. Um, so props to her um, on that. Um, getting into jumps, um, Coco, our, our freshman um, um, freshman heptathlete, she had a great start for long jump, um, doing very well in that event, um, taking the, the points for uh, team, what team was she on? Team Gold, I think it was. Um, let's see, she also did high jump, she did shot put, she did 60 meter hurdle, she did javelin, she was kind of all over the place. Um, and had a really strong showing all around, which I think um, gives us all really good confidence going into her first heptathlon of the year, which is on Thursday over at Chico. Um, it was really good to see how smooth her hurdles race was as well, um, <clears throat> just because that's an event that she's been struggling with the last few weeks. Um, so it was really nice to see that um, kind of come to fruition and have a really smooth, good race. I think it really gives her good, um, positive energy going into this heptathlon. Um, Grace Kasperker has been dealing with a, a little bit of an injury, a minor sprained ankle that's kind of been a, something that's come back a couple times. Um, so she was able to get out there and do some throwing events. Um, and it was just really good to see that she was able to get out there and do well um, and compete and uh, not have any injuries, or excuse me, not have any setbacks with her injury. So again, that gives us confidence that she'll be able to go and have a successful um, heptathlon this week at Chico as well. Um, Joy, she's incredibly strong. She's incredibly fit. Um, you know, she's obviously our, our one of our top uh, returning runners and performers um, and very excited to see what she does this season um, in terms of putting up marks that will get her to the national meet. Um, so it's just a matter, it's, it's more a matter of uh, when rather than if, I think, for Joy. But um, I think she's, she's definitely ready to go and she's poised to have a really great year. Um, let's see, kind of bouncing around all the different events. What, what have I missed? Um, on the men's side, we had a couple of our uh, top sprinters that were sitting out this weekend. Um, they had some minor injuries that we could have run them, but we just wanted to be cautious. Um, so they'll probably be opening up either at Stanislaus or the following weekend um, over at Chico. Um, Ryan Castro had a great start to the season um, for the 100-meter sprints, uh, ran really well. Um, ran great races, executed things technically that he's been working on. 
Um, so that was really good to see. Um, I'm definitely forgetting some of our top finishes. Um, you can edit this part out too. <laughs> uh, Harry was another one I saw. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Harry in the 300 as well. Um, he's one of our short sprinters that might end up being a 400 meter runner for us, um, or certainly can help us out on the four by four relay team. Um, but he's been looking really great in training lately. And, um, I think he's going to have a really good season. Um, distances, um, 4k results. You can probably help me on this more than I know in terms of the times, but I know, um, the, 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 the guys that Jamie was expecting to perform those top few spots definitely seemed like they did perform. Um, sorry, just thinking what races have I missed? What other events? Um, definitely. I would say for sure in the distances, I know Carson Smith had a great performance and so did Ricardo Torres, uh, kind of just taking it out early, uh, on the women's side, I think also too, uh, Sadie Williamson obviously has shown that she's in very good fitness. Um, a lot smaller of a race in the 4K, but like Jess, uh, Jess Hilrodic, who's only a freshman, she had a really solid performance coming out. And then I know Rosa, who's looking to come back and hit another provisional this year um, in her final track season. I know she's been coming off of some some iron deficiency issues, but yeah. she's looking like she'll be back in pretty good shape here and here, here soon. Absolutely. I thought of one more I missed. Um, another freshman, Isabel. Um, Isabel, uh, another very fit, very talented performer. Um, she won the three hurdles. Um, can't remember if she won or was like top two in the, um, the 600. Um, but, but again, just overall, she's got really, really good fitness and, um, she's been working on her hurdle technique quite a bit with Kate. Um, and she's just another athlete to look out for that, you know, once we start running full race distances, um, at NCAA track meet, she's going to do really well. And, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put pressure or jinx it, but, um, really expecting her to hit a national um, provisional qualifying mark um, early on in the season as well. Um, another athlete I saw that had a really solid showing was Iris Valerio in the men's 600. I think he ran somewhere sub 120, which um, historically is translated to a very fast 800 later on in the spring. Um, just talking about that one too. Yeah, you know, it's it's the events that I don't coach as closely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not there in their training and working with those athletes as closely in the distances or 800 and up, but, um, you know, Iris is a great athlete. He's a great competitor. Um, I know I've, I've seen him working hard out there in workouts, especially on those Wednesday evenings, um, those long distance sessions. Um, but I, I think he's poised to do really well. He ran a great opening, uh, season time and um, I think the plan for, for him and the other 800 meter guys is to sit out uh, the Kim Dice meet um, and then cycle back in over at Chico in that next meet to, to open up in his um, collegiate season this year. But I, I think um, he's going to do really well. Awesome. And then just looking into this weekend, heading over to Chico, uh, like you said earlier, you're only sending two athletes, uh, Coco and Grace. Grace, obviously, this isn't her first rodeo. She's, you know, the reigning conference champ in the heptathlon. Uh, Coco, a different story. This is kind of her first real test collegiately um, at the multi-events. How do you kind of go about uh, transitioning somebody that's kind of fresh out of high school into the multi-event discipline and just getting them adjusted for that caliber and that level of events over two days? Yeah, it's 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 a big task. Um, you know, I think the the biggest thing that that multis that helps a multi progress in their experience is just plain experience. You know, and that's something that Coco just doesn't have as much of. Um, she has done a heptathlon in um, AAU track, but like you said, this will be her first collegiate go. Um, and she just transferred in in the spring, so we've had a very, very short uh, turnaround time with her in terms of training to, to try to get her ready. Um, you know, and like I was mentioning earlier, we were a little bit nervous with some of her events in terms of how she's been doing lately and, um, you know, just nervously excited and anticipating how that first hep is going to go because it's, it's a lot of really technical events, um, you know, to, to master or to, to get to a certain level or a certain par before that first meet. Um, but I think she's done a really good job in, in terms of her, her training and um, her hunger to learn. Um, she's come a long way in a really short time. Um, and she really showed up at Green and Gold and, and had, you know, great performances. I know she got a couple PRs as well. Um, so it was really good to see. I think she's... Um, I think she's going to do well next week, or excuse me, this week um, over at Chico. Um, 
but my expectations for this meet are not necessarily to hit PR performances, you know, overall in the heptathlon or all her individual events. Um, I just want her to get the experience of running a collegiate heptathlon, um, you know, kind of how we usually say the first meet of the year is a rust buster. Um, this Chico heptathlon is kind of that for the multi events. It's the rust buster of the multis. Um, so we just want to get that meet experience, um, you know, so that we can practice all the skills that, that need to be practiced, like, you know, meal timing, when to have a snack, um, you know, when you've only got 30 minutes from this event to the next event to the next event to the next event. Um, you know, you have to plan all that stuff out. And, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error in learning, um, you know, athlete to athlete, what do you need to fuel yourself what, versus what does this other person need, um, you know, in terms of fuel, hydration, um, staying warm. <laughs> it's supposed to be uh, potentially hailing or snowing at Chico. So um, we're also a little bit nervous about that, but um, we're just going to try to get them through the meet and get the experience out of it. Um, come out as, as you know, strong as we can. And then we'll, we'll look at what we need to readjust in terms of training um, and fine tuning to kind of get ready for those next more focal meets for the head. Perfect. That's, uh, that's all I got. Thanks coach. All right. Thank you.